Good evening to you, my father's children. My name is Apostle Sean Simpson, Director of Religious Education for Life Ripples Ministries Global Faith Community. On tonight, on this evening, excuse me, but we want to talk about something that is plaguing the church, and that is the problem of sessionism. What sessionism is and what sessionism is not is a problem in the church. And I want to put take your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse uh, 27 uh, through 31. Our major text will be come from 1 Corinthians 12, 28, but we're going to start with verse 27 so we can get a full contextual understanding of what God said about sessionism, and we're going to understand them, understand this even better uh, on tomorrow there will be there'll be a workshop that i'll be doing live and you'll see me in full regalia you'll see me you see me in work clothes today but tomorrow i'll be in uniform uh, now let us make ready with prayer fathers we approach your word as always we approach it reverently and respectfully in the name of jesus and i thank god Lord, for you, Lord God, for giving me this anointing that the truth of the gospel will remain with those that hear. Father, as always, in the name of Jesus, I bind Satan, principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, and I loose an apost the apostolic prophetic anointing. Father, I command every ear to hear and every heart to receive the engrafted word of the Lord. And I thank you that your word is life to them that find it. I thank you, Lord God, even now, Lord, even now, for the blessing of being able to say that we are your children and that we have nothing lacking. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God, for the things that are going through. Hallelujah. For the things that are coming up, for the things that we're going to be doing in this holy convocation revival. In Jesus' glorious name, we give you praise. Amen and amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, and I'm reading out of the King James Version of the Holy Bible. It says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, 
but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Uh, we're going to look at verse 28. the a portion and god has set in the church and god has set in the church and god has set in the church what god has set in the church we must understand when god set something in something he it is for the use of the church the upbuilding of the church or as or the edification of the church in other translations they use the term appointed Appointed. God has a set and appointed time for everything. And God, in the first century, set these gifts in the church. Now, the first portion of the gifts, he says, first apostles, second prophets, third uh, teachers. This is dealing with fivefold ministry which can be found in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Uh, and the purpose starts at verse 7, and it ends at verse 16 of Ephesians 4. I don't have time to get into that tonight. But when we think about it all, the first thing we want to see is God has set or appointed these in the church. God appointed the fivefold ministry. So, who told the church they had the right to take out what God set in the church? Who told you? Or you you ask God. God just said, "No, nah, I don't want these in the church no more." He set it up in the first century. I think he meant it for continuous because. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his word will not return to him void. Therefore, if the church was void of apostles, prophets, and teachers in the from the 15th century on going, something is wrong. Apostles, prophets, teachers. He's dealing with offices first. What God set up as offices in the church and what traditionalism has told us that God set up as offices in the church is not according to scripture. Office gifts are for the edification of the church so that they can do the work of the ministry. Saints cannot do work of the work of the ministry if they don't have the proper equipment and tools to go forth into the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry has always been the ministry of reconciliation. That is the bottom line. Souls won to Christ. And in this great technological technological age we live in, all this technical stuff that we have, you think we could use it as evangelism tools. Let's go further. After that, miracles and gifts of healings. These are dealing with spiritual gifts that work as a manifestation of the spirit working in the believer in those who are in these 
offices. The Bible says we don't all have the same office. Yet, we think that the pastor, the deacon, that's all it's supposed to be. Huh? And the Sunday school teacher. Somehow, that gets mixed up. God said he set. Again, God said he set. Sessionism says, well, it can't work no more because after the closing of the canon, uh, we, don't have, we don't have need of these anymore. You God now, huh? Well, God said in his word about this, don't matter to you. The Bible says the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So, Mr. Theologian, Mr. Apologist, or oh, in this in this age, Mr. and Ms. Apologist, Mr. and Ms. Theologian, who write, you are God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not knocking you if you're a theologian or apologist, but make sure your theology and your apologetics line up in context with the Word of God. God bless you to Sister Santos and to Pastor Wilson, who have joined us on tonight. Now let's go a little bit further. Then gifts of then helps. 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 That's for those who like to do stuff on the outside. Deacons, this is where you fall in. Helps. Trustees, that's where you fall in. Helps. Y'all don't want to be cleaning. Taking care of the widows and the orphans. This is what the benevolence, mission benevolence fund is for. This is what the mission of missionary and benevolence society are for. Pastors aid society. That's what you for. You who operate in that, that gift of helps are supposed to do that. Governments, administrations, we're back to the five-fold ministry. They're talking about the pastor. The pastor is the one who administers in the church. Not the deacon. Not the trustee. God wanted pastors to oversee his church to administer in his church, to govern in the church. Deacons are leaders, yes, but you are like non-commissioned officers, in, like in the military. You are not officers, like from general on down to second lieutenant. Second lieutenant. You don't fall in that category. Officers are in the government. Helps is non-commissioned. Oh, oh, yeah. The deacon is not a commissioned office. No, deacons got voted in. Pastors didn't. So those of you who think you're supposed to vote your pastor in, Hire your pastor. No, God says, I give you pastors. I never read where you hire a pastor. Diversity of tongues. This is when the gift of tongues is in operation. The gift of tongues is in operation to edify the church. This is public use of the gift of tongues. Public use of the gift of tongues 
with interpretation equals edification of the church, which is equal to prophecy. Now, then the question must be asked, are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? The answer is no. Have all the gifts of healing? No. And notice it's plural there. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? Again, the obvious answer. Is no. So God is asking rhetorical questions of his church. Now, what he put in the church, set in the church, appointed in the church, the appointments of God, or the appointments of Yeshua HaMashiach to my Messianic Jewish friend. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show unto you a more excellent way. Now, when we uh, we gonna get into chapters 13, 12, 13, 14 as a conglomerate. But when you think about it, sessionism doesn't want this in the church. Why doesn't sessionism want this in the church? Because all that day, because this is a dead stuff. You want tradition. You want to do your thing. You want. You, the pastor, getting the glory. Oh, uh, 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 they can run this church. The trustees tell the tell the pastor what to do. Oh, and we don't like what the pastor said. Oh, we vote them out. Where my cash go? Who told you? Who gave you the right to do it? Where in the Bible does it say you vote your pastor in? And then vote him out if you don't like what he's saying. If he's not doing anything immoral, huh? He's not being a crook. He's not robbing you. Then uh what's your problem? What's your hang up? Oh, you want to be in charge. Now, as a black man, I can say this. Black Baptist churches who vote their pastors in, you're out of order. And I'm an ordained Baptist preacher, so I can say that. And as apostle of the Lord, of the, to the church, to the New Testament church, that's who I, that's what, that's where my apostleship comes in. And here's the prophetic thing, portion coming, because I'm warning you. The reason you're falling apart, the reason you're only getting 20 and 30 members is somebody forgot to tell y'all how to evangelize. So if pastor, if all you're doing is going in there, preaching on Sunday morning, see you, might see you on Wednesday evening for Bible class, don't know how to counsel your people. Don't know how to get in the Holy Ghost and, 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 and hear him. You are out of order. The Bible says, do everything decently and in order. The same thing goes for Methodists. You don't vote for bishops. He that desired the office of a bishop desire a good work. It's got to be in your heart to do bishopric. It's got to be in your heart to do apostolic work. It's got to be in your heart to do prophetic work. It's got to be in your heart to do pastoral work. It's got to be in your heart to do evangelistic work. It's got to be in your heart to do teaching. Otherwise, what are you doing but gaining money? You are nothing but a hireling. You are hireling. The Bible says the shepherd takes, feeds the flock of God. That is your, your job. 
Your job is to feed and nurture the flock of God. You're the under shepherd. You're the overseer of the church. You're supposed to see the saints are fed and that they grow and are uplifted. Not that they are indoctrinated to a particular denomination's doctrine. What the Bible got to say about it should be your final answer. Sessionism wants none of this. Sessionism wants everything its way. Sessionism is like Burger King. Have it your way. Now, I'm not saying my sessionist brothers are not saved. God forbid. Because I have met some of the most loving, caring men and women of God in sessionist churches. They will feed you. They will help you financially if you are in need. All, uh, all it's got, it goes through the goes through. Pastor's got to say, "Look, we need this, this, that, and the third, and you get this, that, and the third. We have a need to meet. Don't have to say who's it for, but there is a need to be met, and there will be a love offering taken up." Sometimes the church will take out of its own account and go buy a couple of bags, a couple of two, uh, four or five bags of groceries for someone that'll cover them for the week. We know at the end of the month it's hard, but burgers. Rice and a few canned vegetables go a long way over the week. And their people are eternal grateful. Saints, we got to get it together. To my sessionist brothers and sisters, I am a continuous. Yet I continue to preach in Baptist churches. Why? Because I, sh I love you. I continue to preach wherever God sends me. And I teach wherever God sends me. The reason why I do it is because the love of God constrains me to go forth. It is like fire in my bones and I cannot contain it. I have to speak out what thus saith the Lord. Now I thank you and I, I praise God for you. And finally I lift my hands to a holy God and speak the priestly blessing over you. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee and cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And I speak the Ephesians benediction upon you. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be the glory through the church by Christ Jesus throughout all generations, world without end. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, I love you. God loves you. Have a blessed day and a glorious tomorrow.